listen now to a reading taken from chapter 61 of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to prisoners, to announce a year of favour from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. They will be called oaks of justice, planted by the Lord to show his mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me seated. I chose that reading today from the prophet Isaiah because it speaks to us something of the mission that each of us has received. These were words that spoke to Jesus. We know when he picked up this text and read it in his hometown, he told the people it was being fulfilled. And it's a text that, please God, is being fulfilled in his followers today. One of the reasons I chose this text for today is because today is the feast of St. Anthony Mary Claret, the founder of the Claritian missionaries. And this was a text that inspired him in his life. And this novena, these devotions to St. Jude, are one of the instruments that the Claritian Missionary Congregation uses to fulfill its mission. And so on this, the feast day of Claret, I thought it might be a moment to share with you a few of my thoughts and reflections on the Claritians and the mission the congregation has. I don't know how much you know about St. Anthony Mary Claret and the Claritian missionaries, but at present there are about 3,000 members working in more than 60 countries around the world. That's priests, brothers, students, involved in following the example of Claret. But the Claritian family consists of other branches as well. There are congregations of religious women, groups of lay people. So thousands, literally, who are working, following his example, serving thousands of others around the world. And when you look at the Claritian congregation and the work that these followers of Claret do, you'll find all sorts of different works being carried out. Parishes, missions, schools, publishing houses, television stations, radios, all sorts of different works, centres of spirituality, retreat houses, promotion of devotions like this devotion to St. Jude. Many different things, but behind them, I believe, one simple mission. And to understand that mission, it's necessary to look to the life of St. Anthony Mary Claret, but not his life as a bishop. I believe, personally, that we see the essence of our mission as a congregation, not in his life as a bishop or a priest, but actually present in his life as a child. Because at the age of seven, when he was preparing for his first communion, there were two things he learnt about in his catechism classes that struck him, that worried him. One was he learnt about the idea of eternity and things going on forever. And the other thing he learnt about 
was hell and the idea of people suffering for eternity in hell was something that troubled him deeply. But it's interesting because as a young boy, it wasn't that he was struck that there were these evil people who would be in hell for eternity. What he couldn't get his head around was how the church, with all the priests, with all the religious sisters, with all the lay people that claim to be followers of Jesus, how they could allow people to pass from this world without having come to know and experience God's love in their lives. And that thing, that question that he began to identify as a child was something that stayed with him throughout his life. And he constantly tried to find ways to encourage people to make others know God's love. And so that, in essence, is our mission as a congregation today. For these thousands of people working, following the example of Claret, seek to help people experience God's love using the different instruments, the different works, the different apostolates that we have. And so on a day like this, as we gather to pray, I would ask you to pray for the Claritian missionaries and their family and the work that they do, that they would be faithful to this mission to spread God's love. But an important part of Claret's vision was also that it wasn't just a job, a mission for priests and religious. It was something that all the baptised should share in. And I remember an experience I had a few years ago, well, many years ago now, I'm older than I want to remember, but when I was a student, I met a cousin of mine in the street that I hadn't seen for many years. And he introduced me to someone that was with him. And as he introduced me, he said, well, this is my cousin, but be nice to him because he's training to be a priest. And then he said to, the, to me, oh, and this is my brother-in-law. Uh, he doesn't believe in God. He's a socialist, a communist. And he... You know, so that's why I told him to not, to be, not to be nasty to you. And then this person said to me, so what type of priest are you going to be? So I said, well, you won't know the group I belong to because in England we're very small and no one knows of us. So even people coming to the Catholic Church for years wouldn't know of our congregation. And so I said, I belong to a group called the Claritian Missionaries. And immediately he said to me, oh, that's the group that was started by Anthony Mary Claret. He was a bishop, wasn't he? And he was one of the first bishops to encourage lay people to recognize their responsibility to share the gospel and to try and do things to make people experience God's love. I was a bit astounded because basically he was telling me everything I would have heard in a bishop, which you kind of, you take not with a pinch of salt because that's what you're told, but here was someone who didn't know much about the Catholic Church but knew very much the work of Claret. He was someone who had an influence not just on the church, but was even someone who could inspire people outside the church because of the way he encouraged people to be people of love, people of hope. And so, as we continue with these devotions these days, I'd invite you to focus not just on the needs that we have, but also on the gifts that we've received. And to ask yourself, how may God be asking you to use your gifts so that you can become an instrument of hope, an instrument of God's love in your families, in the places where you live, in the places where you work. And so let's continue now with a moment's silence and pray for each other that we would be instruments of hope in a world that can feel so hopeless to so many people. And that God may bless us and keep us safe and bless those we love. <laughs>
Thank you.
meditation prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, our mediator and brother, we offer our prayer today. We acknowledge the special friendship that your apostle Saint Jude has with you. Through his love and friendship with you, we unite our prayers. Be present with us today and each day of our lives. Deepen our love for our Father and each other. May these graces and favors for which we pray be granted through you, who love and reign with the Father in union with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Divine praises. Blessed be God. 